Hey guys, welcome back to the Stars Made Us Do It. I keep saying us, but I'm going to restart that, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Sure, (laughs) why not? Hey guys, welcome back to the Stars Made Me Do It. It is Martha. Mimi, hello. And Sierra, hello. And today we're going to be talking about perfections because it is Mimi's birthday month. She is happy birthday. (laughs) It's gone from birthday weekend to now birthday week, but now it's birthday month. So I'm here for it. (laughs) We've already passed your birthday. So I don't want to say it's your birthday, but it's your birthday for your birthday. Yes. Um, So we're talking about perfections, which is something we've never talked about before. And it has to do with whole sign house system, which we don't normally talk about whole sign house system on this podcast. Normally, we're talking about Placidus. So, Sierra, do you want to tell us what's the difference? I do want to tell you what's the difference. Um, so, with like we've talked about when we're talking about interceptions and everything, with Placidus, you can have more than one sign in a house. So, that's why I say, like, I'm a Sagittarius rising, but I have Capricorn in my first house as well, because I have Sagittarius and Capricorn in my first house. But that, so that's Placidus. You can have two signs in a house and you can, if you have an interception, have three signs in a house. So like when I explained it as like pizza toppings, all those houses are slices of pizza. You can have two or three or sometimes one topping on, you know, each of your slices of pizza, but with whole sign, it's just one flavor per slice. So in whole sign, the Sagittarius rising in my entire first house is taken up by Sagittarius. And then you have each house has equal amount of each sign. And there's only one sign per house, one pizza topping flavor per house. And so there's different ways to read charts that way. And I know that Mimi and I started with Placidus. Mimi is dabbling now and going towards whole sign. Martha's in whole sign. So we can get into different housing systems in another episode, but just wanted to put it out there that perfections deal with whole sign. So like, keep in mind that when we're talking about this, it's going to be one sign per house, only one sign per house. There we go. Yeah. And it's also because it's dealt with whole sign. It's such a traditional technique perfections, um, that it also deals with the, uh, like the ruler, which, um, Martha will probably get to called the time Lord is the traditional rulers. So I just had, as I was 27, I had a fourth house perfection year, which is, uh, for me, it's Scorpio. And that ruler would have been Mars rather than Pluto, because it deals with that more traditional, uh, astrology viewpoint. Yeah, the, I just know that there's previous episodes on planets. And I think when we did mutual mm-hmm. reception, we got into all like the planets associated with signs. So go back, mm-hmm. listen to the uh, mutual reception or just the planets episode if you want more info on that. Yeah. And well, really quickly, we can just talk about the like the two ones that change. So for example, Scorpio um, in like modern uh, astrology, it's ruled by Pluto. But before it was Mars, which is what Mm -hmm. Mimi just said. And then the other sign that changes, I'm like looking at all the planets on my computer right now, Mm. is Pisces. Um, Now we talk about it ruled by Neptune. But in traditional astrology, it was ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I had it. I, I had the whole... And the whole Martha's speech in my head. Cold. <laughs> yeah, the whole speech in my head. Yeah. And I just got half of it out. Also forgot to shout out all of our socials. Um, maybe we'll just do that, that at the we'll end. Let's just do that at <laughs> yeah. the end. <laughs> and then um, the sign Aquarius, also traditionally ruled by Saturn, now more modernly ruled by Uranus. So those three mm-hmm. outer planets that were discovered after traditional astrology really became established, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, um, those are planets that rule signs that already had a ruler in traditional astrology. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of fun just in general even if you use like traditional astrology to look at the, the, uh, even if you use modern astrology to look at the traditional rulers as well. Mm. Yeah. I mean, thinking about like, if we just look at the transit that just happened that a lot of astrologers were looking forward to the Jupiter Neptune conjunction, those were both the rulers of Pisces and they're also in Pisces. And I think that's why it was such a an intense moment for astrologers and like feeling that really intensely because they 
know very well how to act in uh, Pisces energy. Mm-hmm. I love that. And like to working together, they know how to work really well together as well because mm-hmm. they're very similar energies, but very different. So very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Do we want to talk about what perfection is? Yeah. I'm going to jump in and just say that I know the least about this. And so I'm going to be interrupting the two of you to be like, I don't get it. Tell me more. <laughs> and I'm going to be that, uh, that kind of questioning what's going on. Cause I've heard of perfection. I know we've talked about perfection, but you guys are the ones who really mm-hmm. have a big grasp on that. So like perfection, would you say it's a form of like predictive astrology? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think with traditional astrology in general, uh, traditional astrology is predictive astrology. Modern astrology is what really brought in um, characteristic and like how to assess like more psychoanalytical astrology. That's much more modern. That sort of came up in the 1700s, whereas traditional astrology up until that point was all predictive. So oh, this technique, it. perfection years, that is because it's older, it is more traditional. It is always going to be more predictive. But I mean, we as kind of hybrid astrologers are going to read it how we how we feel it yeah that's kind of the beauty about astrology is that everyone kind of reads everything a little bit differently also I do want to say I'm not an expert on this so I'm not claiming anything I'm saying as real I've just listened Mm -hmm. to like one podcast about it and like read a little (laughs) bit about it online but I get the gist of it and for the sake of Mimi's birthday we're freaking doing it yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's why we're doing it for like celebrating Mimi's birthday. If you go back to November, when we did my birthday, we talked about um, the progressions and we talked about solar return because solar return Mm -hmm. is a type of predictive astrology progressions. You can see like where I was from when I was born to where I am now. And so this is a really cool thing to do for a birthday because you had Mm -hmm. a solar return year. The the sun was back in the same spot as when you were born. And so that's why we wanted to do this for uh, Mimi birthday extravaganza episode. And, um, so let's, we're using Mimi's chart and, um, you know, since she just had her birthday to do this perfection episode. So let's, let's dive in. Mia, Martha, you want to give us a little lowdown on what perfections even are? Yes. So I'm really bad at explaining things. So I'm going to do it. And then we're going to ask questions to me if I said it wrong. So perfection (laughs) years is, the pi of our astrology chart, each year, one slice of the pie gets lit up and it's activated. And that slice of the pie, whatever um, zodiac sign is ruling it, also that planet that's associated gets lit up as well. So for example, mm-hmm. when you're one years old, it's a first house perfection year. And if you're an, we're just going to say the person is an Aries rising because the first house is Aries. So your first birthday, it's a first house perfection year, your first year of life, sorry, your first year of life, not your first birthday. Your first mm-hmm. year of life is a first house perfection year. Aries is ruling that house. So that means your first house, whatever planets are in there are activated and the planet that's associated with Aries, so Mars. So then wherever Mars would be in your chart, that's activated too. And then any like aspects, things like that, that's where you can come through and make some uh, futuristic guesses of what's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Did that make sense? Sure. It totally, it, it definitely, well, I'm knowing the least it made sense, but can I ask, I don't know if this is going to throw us off, but like, what would that be then? if like this like first year of life for this baby what if they were a Sagittarius rising so then it would be still a first house perfection year and it would be a Sagittarius first house perfection year and then Jupiter wherever it is in their chart is lit up okay okay got it Mm -hmm. okay and I love that you said Sagittarius because Mimi's having a Sagittarius year (laughs) yeah (laughs) nice (laughs) I did it on purpose totally Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And you can observe also like that's called the time Lord, right? The planet that rules the sign on your perfection year house. That is called the time Lord, which I always thought was pretty cool sounding. And Mitch is always like, yeah, okay. I can get into that kind of thing. Cause it's like, (laughs) sounds like a Marvel movie. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, it does. Um, I was thinking like Lord of the Rings. (laughs) Oh yeah. 
for sure. Um, so then you pay attention to what that planet is doing in the transits as well, or what planets are transiting your time Lord kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting too, because I work more with natal charts. So that's very interesting. I never even knew that it would be like, mm. yeah, I guess that makes sense to pay attention to the transits as well. Mm. Yeah. So why don't we talk a little bit about what my 27 was for, so for anybody who is 27, you're going through a fourth house perfection year. Um, and for me, cause I figured it'd be nice to go through a reflection before getting into sort of predictive, but, um, for me, 27, my time Lord was Mars, uh, because I have Scorpio on the fourth house and that's traditionally ruled by the planet Mars. Um, and so anything that any planets did, uh, or transited or made any aspects to my Mars, that would be a little extra, like highlighted a little bit more activated. Uh, so that Mars energy really moving forward, taking action, maybe confrontation being highlighted for the year, which I could definitely relate to. Um, and it being in my eighth house of having to learn how to let go of dealing with some intensity, um, and then it's in Pisces. So maybe getting emotionally overwhelmed, uh, which definitely I felt for 27 was a big year of confrontation, learning how to deal with confrontation without getting super overwhelmed, setting boundaries. Um, and yeah, just like learning how to dive deep into that kind of boundary setting. So because your this like past like year 27 for you was the perfection year in the four, happening in the fourth house, fourth house mm -hmm. for you. Scorpio, we're going to the traditional ruler, Mars. So then the mm -hmm. way that you then jumped to the eighth house there was because your Mars is in your eighth house in your natal chart, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Got you. Got yeah. you. Got you. And if you think about it, Pisces season was rough for me. <laughs> so it kind of makes a lot of sense that like my mental health took like a dive in, in, in Pisces season and like really paying attention to how I was feeling and what to do to like make myself feel better. And even if we went with the modern astrologer, that's like Pluto in Scorpio in the fourth house, mm. and it's exactly trying my Mars. So they're always working together anyway. I was going to ask you if we could dabble in looking at the like traditional ruler. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's really interesting. And then I also just have a question of curiosity. Did you pay attention to like those Mars transits and how did those feel? Um, I don't know that I paid attention to them so much, but I can recognize now, like on, upon reflection that, like I said, Pisces season was a lot when everything was going over my Mars. Um, I think about Sagittarius season. That was, um, when things were squaring where the sun was square my Mars. And that was when I like did my visit to France. So there was a lot of action going on. It was in my fifth house of joy of, uh, mm. of happiness of creativity, um, and just like play. Um, and yeah, I guess I, I, what did I do for Scorpio season? I guess I can't remember too well. I don't remember either. Yeah. <laughs> what do you remember about my life, Martha? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what were you doing in Scorpio season? Well, we do yeah. talk every day, so maybe I wouldn't know, but, um, yeah. no, I was just, I was just thinking about how you're talking about when it was in your fifth house and then your fifth house is like Sagittarius. So of course yeah. you're in France at the same time. I know. Um, very true. really interesting and I want to even just like look at my own chart after this and be like wait where am I going yeah. at in my perfection year because I, I never really look at this I just it's just a concept that I know about but yeah. I feel like you can get so in depth by this yeah I was just gonna say when um planets were in like Virgo that was a really that was when I was like really dealt with confrontation head on and like dealing with communication and um, you know, like assessing how I was feeling and stuff. So that opposition to my time Lord to Mars, I guess that would make a lot of sense too. Oh yeah. 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 Mm. Very interesting. Well, do we want to get into your 28th perfection year? Sure. So I didn't write any notes about this uh, beforehand I just kind of glanced at your chart and so Mimi is going into her 28th year she's in her 28th year now which means the fifth house is lit up we actually didn't talk about this how it so each year it goes to the next house so mm -hmm. the first year of life 
first house, second year of life, second house, so on, so forth, blah, 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 which is confusing because I, in my head, was counting, oh, I'm one years old, oh, I'm two years old, but we need to remember that you're also zero years old before you're Mm -hmm. one. So if you're counting, just remember zero years old. Um, So anyways, if we count all the way around to 28, that brings us to the fifth house. So that means Mimi's fifth house is lit up. There's no planets in the fifth house in Mimi's whole sign house chart, but the ruler is in her fourth house. So it's funny because you're just coming out of a fourth house perfection here. (laughs) And then we're literally still going back. It's like, psych, you're actually not moving forward. We're going to stay on this a little bit longer. And we're going to expand on that growth because Jupiter is expansion. We're going to expand on that foundational growth that you've just made in this past year. And we're going to just focus on that even more and dive down deeper because Scorpio is all about diving deep. Mm-hmm. And these planets are not in aspect in my um, mind. They're a wide aspect. But you have your North Node and Pluto also in your fourth house, which just mm-hmm. every time I look at your chart intuitively, I'm like, your life um, path in what will put you in divine alignment is like diving deep into your foundations and really understanding where you come from and why you are the way you are expanding Mm. that having extreme transformation. And that's how you get aligned with yourself. And then actually I had um, an astrology reading a couple of weeks ago and she said something really interesting to me that I'm going to say to you in different planets, but so your Jupiter's lit up in your fourth house. And I feel like when you expand in that fourth house, it's going to really light up your, your Jupiter is opposed to Venus in your 10th house Mm -hmm. in Taurus. So I feel like when you expand that fourth house, those foundations, diving deep, understanding yourself, it's going to light up that Venus in your 10th house. And people are going to see the beauty that you create from your pain and from your growth and through uh, your depth. Mm. Wow. Wow. I feel like I just said a lot, but it was just flowing out of me. (laughs) No, I love that. That's really beautiful. And being somebody who I feel like I do that a lot where I just let the words come out until, until the message comes, it's like really nice to be on the receiving end of that. So thanks. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we just go in flow and reading and then Mm -hmm. when the message ends, the message ends, but honestly we could go so in depth into like so many different things, but I definitely think your work life is like Mm -hmm. going to expand a lot in this, in this upcoming year. And that's not necessarily anything that's technically lit up. It's not the ruler of your perfection year that's lighting Mm -hmm. up or anything like that. But I think in response to all of your foundational things in that fourth house in Jupiter, it's going to light up your work life or not even necessarily work, just how people see you and receive you. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jupiter, my Jupiter is always connected to my Venus in the 10th house, Mm -hmm. you know, because they're in an exact opposition to each other there. I also have a bowl chart, which means every single planet of mine is on one side of the chart and Jupiter and Venus are exactly opposite each other. They're sort of the tops of the bowl. So they are always working together. So that like expansion in the fourth house, my, my emotional work that I do is always related to what I do for others or how I contribute to society because through whatever difficulties I go through, whatever emotional growth that I go through, it always then becomes useful as a service for other people. Mm -hmm. I really like that because we talk about this all the time, how clients are always, or not even necessarily clients, even just people you come across in your life, friends you're talking to that day, Mm. always are reflecting something you're working on in yourself. Which I think is why we're like often triggered by, or not necessarily us in particular, but you'll see people getting triggered on the street and like having reactions to people. And it's like, yeah, because you're being shown yourself Mm. in so many ways. And it's asking you just to be like so gentle. Anyways, I feel like you do that so beautifully in life. Like you're always helping people and using your growth to show up Mm. for people. Yeah, that's interesting. 
we can also just talk about how you're freaking lucky to have Jupiter like as it's transiting, like lighting mm -hmm. up for you. Wait, okay, I don't have your transits pulled up right now, but Jupiter mm -hmm. is in uh in your eighth house. Oh my god, can yeah. we just talk about how your 27th year is just being shown up again for you? Yeah, for real. It's also like literally on top of my Mars. <sighs> oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, it's like, sorry, you just had a crazy powerful year and you're going to continue that. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool how that works out. Like, it's very purposeful. Yeah. Like, it's not yeah. just, I don't know. It's not like, okay, this year was for this and you've accomplished it in one year. It's like the your chart had a way of being like, you did a lot of the work, but now mm -hmm. we're going to continue that because we're lighting up planets that are already that, you know, you already yeah. dealt with last year. And yeah. I, I guess like just as a, for people following along, like as we talked about your 27th year being that fourth house, you have Scorpio on the fourth house. So since we moved on to the fifth house, that would be Sagittarius next. And so like, that mm -hmm. is the Sagittarius being lit up that we talked about with Mimi. And that's why we went to Jupiter because Jupiter rule sag and then but your mm -hmm. jupiter being back in your fourth house going over all mm -hmm. of those fourth house things that you were just going with last year but how cool that jupiter is the planet of like optimism and expansion and like higher learning so it's almost like scorpio is this let's dive down deep get into the nitty gritty of it and jupiter's mm -hmm. like okay now let's let's shine with it and make it you know and make it something that we can I don't know, like bring joy to in a way. Mm -hmm. And, and I really like how that's a, a transition from a kind of, I think it shows a little bit of just a transition of Scorpio to Sagittarius in general too, which is oh, yeah, pretty cool. I really like what you just said. Like, okay, let, now let's shed joy on what you just went through. Yeah. Mm. I really, really like that. Oh, that hit me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be it. That's gonna What's be really interesting in, in traditional astrology, you have benefics and malefics, right? So Mars is known as like a bad planet and it causes difficult things. And it's, um, it's known as a malefic. It's not a particularly happy planet to have like be prominent in your chart. And so in traditional astrology, my 27 would have been quite difficult and, um, you know, arduous. And then Jupiter is the great benefic. So it's almost like, great, you went through all of that stuff, all of that grime. And now this year is the year of like great rewards coming at you mm. or, you know, like a lot of growth, a lot of expansion. But my Jupiter is also trying my Saturn in the eighth. So like that eighth house is still being activated in that way. Um, but this time it's through rather than like the co-presence of Mars and Saturn, it's through Jupiter working with Saturn really well. Um, you know, like bringing growth through the lessons that I'm learning in that eighth house stuff rather than the aggression in the eighth house that Mars. Yeah. Has. And like remembering what Sierra always says about Saturn, like maybe this is the abundant side of Saturn that you're getting, mm -hmm. not necessarily the restriction side. Yeah. Mm. Like going through all the hard work you went through, like Saturn is, you know, reward from the work you do. And it seems like last perfection year was like putting in the work and now it's like, okay, like it's still the same subject area, but it's the reward part of all of the work that you've been putting in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that general attitude is safe because the fifth house is the house of joy and creativity, you know? Yeah. So generally just that being activated for me. And also the house of children. So that's kind of interesting if I'll like interact with kids a lot or yeah, I don't know. You can come to France and babysit for me if you want. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, but please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. And yeah, I feel like we need to like come back in a year and like let everyone know how this showed up for you. But I also mm -hmm. just wanted to talk about how um yeah, like how where Jupiter's going to be transiting. It's also going to transit into your ninth house and like go mm -hmm. right over your Mercury. So that's really interesting. I feel like you're going to be really joyful about how you communicate your learning. I hope so. Which, well, I'm already kind of seeing that. Like uh, you've been going, you've been in a course for astrology for a little bit now. And I feel mm -hmm. like so much of your knowledge is like really showing up now. Like- Mm. big time I'm like whoa she knows a lot she's smart as hell and it's like exciting hearing you talk about different knowledgeable things mm. yeah I mean my 
progressed mercury just entered gemini too so i am really Mm. feeling that great collect information like let's just pick up a lot of things um but you know what's actually really interesting is when you know looking at my solar return chart with when you look at you know someone for me when i have a, a session with somebody whose birthday it is i'll do a solar return and like a perfection reading sort of thing so the next 12 months of your life reading and so to blend those two together like my solar return chart is a Leo moon and a Leo rising. And then my perfection year is the fifth house, which is Leo's house. So it's so much of this learn how to shine and let yourself be seen. And then with that Venus also 10th house of like, again, letting yourself be seen by, I guess, society or like what I contribute, Um, but also, you know, that emotional factor. Can you use perfection in a solar return chart? Like you you pull up, like you pull up the solar return chart and then you like, if you're 28, then you go to the fifth house. No, I don't think so. Perfection is based off your natal. Okay. Yeah. You can't Mm. like add those together. Okay. Mm. You kind of just act like they're like composite charts by each other kind of. Yeah. I know you have multiple like windows open. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But that's like kind of fun to like bounce the energies off each other. Hmm. Mm. Oh, what I'm going to be doing tonight. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I have a, I have a document or like a picture open of like the perfection thing. I'm like, okay, I just turned 31. So then what, uh, what would that be? And that would be, um, the eighth house, eighth, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would be the eighth house. So, and what's your ruler of the eighth house? Oh, you need your whole yeah. sign chart. My, it would be uh cancer. Well, if she's Sag rising. Yeah. It'd be cancer. Yeah. Mm. so then the moon so the moon okay. yeah we talked about this when yeah. you turned 31 that the moon was your time lord Ooh, yeah, yeah and where is the moon the oh yeah in the first uh, well, <laughs> no well, it's, in Sarah, the it's in the second it's in the second it would be right. in the second then yeah yeah, yeah sorry yeah. i'm like bouncing in my head so like, whole sign. that's that's an example of whole sign if like for my chart and whole sign my entire first house would be sagittarius so my entire second house would be mm. capricorn so if we go to like where is my moon um because I'm activated in my eighth house, eighth house, the ruler of my eighth house is cancer, cancer, what rules, what planet, the moon. So we find my moon and in whole sign, my moon would be in the second house. So then that whole like home Which and is so interesting values and, um, I don't know, just and like health and business. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Your resources, what you use to keep living your sustenance. Yeah. And then, well, that's been such a thing that has been such a thing. You're right. Very Taurus centric, like themes Mm -hmm. this, Mm -hmm. this year. And then Martha, you would be in, I'm having a third house. Yeah. Third house. Oh, wow. A Leo year. And Mm. my son is in the third house. And literally right before we just got on this call, I was talking about how I forget how I literally know everyone in my neighborhood until (laughs) someone comes over and I take them out and like, I'm just talking to everyone. Then I'm Mm. like, right, I am the most neighbor person house person ever, (laughs) ever. And like this year is really where I built that up because Mm. my daughter just started walking in the past year and we started going to the park and I just talked to everyone. I like, I literally saw Martha yesterday and we go to the park and like, as we're walking to the park, it's like seeing people that, you know, you're telling me who everybody is. We get to the park. You're like, that's that mom. That's that kid. That's this guy. And we also respect it. And you're like, that kid's totally a Taurus. I can just tell. And then, but you're yeah. also like <laughs> talking to all these people. And, uh, and it's really, it's such a third house, but also like, such leo vibes of like you know everybody but everybody knows you and mm, yeah yeah true but i i acquaint that to my my aries daughter and that's why everyone knows me. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i feel like that's a lot of like making friends when you're a mom is like through your kids you know for sure for yeah. sure yeah. yeah 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 i see my year big time and actually mm-hmm. i also see the way that I've been so affected by each uh, season, uh, like each Zodiac season. I'm like, God, I don't want to leave Pisces because I love it so much. Oh (laughs) God, we're going into this sign. And I feel it like shifting in my body. I'm like, oh, get Mm. ready for it. So yeah, the sun has really been a big aspect for me. And then that also, I feel like Sierra, you have like a big focus on the moon. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like the moon in general, I've been like really paying attention to every single like new moon and full moon and like been much more like moon ritual person lately. Like for sure. That's so true. I, I like, I'm so grateful for Martha because my flight got delayed because of COVID reasons on the Capricorn, like new moon. And I was like, Martha, can Mm. you put some water out for me? (laughs) Capricorn moon water. (laughs) And uh, yeah, that's so true. Like just this focus on the moon and really like paying attention to the different days and that sound like not just my moon, but the moon. That's really cool. Mm. Yeah. Also, well, I'm also curious, like talking about this, I wonder how it feels for like quicker moving planets like that. Like, okay. Mm. So for example, if you're ruled by the moon that year or not ruled by the moon. Yeah. I guess I can say that. And the moon is like, flying through the zodiac because it's the freaking moon is that a lot for like a person physically kind of, like not physically but mentally i don't know what i'm trying to say do you get it you get I what i'm just picking, like the down? nature of the moon yes the na- hundred uh <laughs> the nature of the moon in general is just like yes it is quick moving and it's all about being in flow with what is going on right mm. now right and so i don't think that um i think like you're the time lord is specifically the planet in your chart and the time lord isn't like the moon right now like all the time throughout the year but because the moon in general is so quick moving it is so fast paced and it is about being in flow and like being in the ebb and flow of daily life and the changes of every day that yeah i think it would affect them a lot that they would be much more um you know emotionally stimulated or like ready to move with the moon on on any given day whereas if your time lord is like like for me for example jupiter which is one of the slower moving planets uh it's going to be a little bit more of like okay this is my big project that i'm focusing on right now and then okay i can feel a shift into you know this project that i'm going to be focusing on now too whereas the moon is much more like i'm feeling this today and i'm gonna do this which I'm feeling guys. I feel that yeah. like if this, this year is my, the moon is my time Lord, which just like, that just already makes me feel like I'm in a superhero movie. The moon is my time Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I definitely feel like there's been so much I, like emotional turmoil without it being turmoil, you know, like emotional, mm. like ebbs and flows, roller like coaster, there's yeah. roller coastering of lots of emotions and lots of, you know, feeling this, feeling that, feeling like, you know, in, I don't know, I definitely can feel that quickness, like that you said, Martha, I can definitely feel that. And it'll be interesting to see Mimi, if you, um, if you see that more like larger type of Mm. energy, um, and, and Martha, you were saying like how you feel extra, you know, affected by the different Zodiac seasons, the sun moving through each sign like you feel Mm -hmm. that like you know much more than maybe you had in the past so I think that's really interesting how the the time lords show up yeah fascinating fascinating I'm just like staring at Mimi's chart like oh and then this year it's gonna be this and that trying to like make guesses about what's gonna happen in your life I know I want to get into a structure of having like prediction episodes and then a year later reflecting on those prediction episodes because that would be really cool yeah i love listening to those like podcast episodes where astrologers are talking about stuff like that Um, well we are the astrologers that talk about stuff like that (laughs) yeah oh yeah true wait whoa (laughs) (laughs) i just had like a whole like mind blown moment (laughs) it's like i like listening to really smart people talk about this subject wait that's me (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you already kind of predicted emotional expansion and that'll be affecting my work life. Yeah. So we're going to see what happens. Yeah, for sure. What about you, Sierra? What do you you see with my Jupiter? With your Jupiter being like, I just, I mean, travel seems like kind of duh in a way, but like, I don't want to just say Mm -hmm. that Jupiter is like the travel, but I know that it's, it's like making an aspect to that ninth house. Um, But when it comes to Jupiter, just being my little Jupiter ruled self, like just like this, I feel like when people really dive into the Jupiter energy and, um, I was giving a a reading recently of like for my friend's baby, who is a Sag rising too, and a Sag sun like yours truly. And I was just like, they're going to be lucky, but believing that they're lucky 
is a huge part of that. Like when you have this Mm -hmm. like inner belief, like, which I feel like my parents instilled in me, like my mantra being everything always works out for your Sierra. Like that is my mantra. And like Mm -hmm. with that, in addition to my like Jupiter, uh, you know, Sagittarius energy, I feel like anytime I'm feeling really down because I have this like deep, like kind of, you know, 31 year long mantra going on of everything's going to work out. It's like a belief. And because Jupiter is all about like higher belief systems, when you believe in yourself and you believe in you being lucky. So I feel like that's something with like a Jupiter trend of even just having this, like, not just faith in something bigger, but like in you, I think that that could be something Mm. that's going on too, where like believing that good things happen. I feel like I always, you know, focus on that positive aspect, but Jupiter is all about the, the brighter side to things. And so Mm. having that be a theme, I hope that shows up for you, you know? Mm. I was also just thinking, because I know you have a bunch of travel plans this year. It's so funny how we like book things from the past that work out for the future astrology. Does that make Mm. sense? Like we don't even realize that that's going to happen, but just somehow it always actually lands on the perfect time of the astrology in the sky. So crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so right. Yeah. I mean, I have travel plans. I have travel plans uh, during Gemini season, which would be in my uh, 11th house. The sun would be in my 11th Mm. house, but there's a bunch of other planets Uh, obviously that aren't going to be in the 11th house for that. And then um, I have uh, travel plans for Christmas time. So that'll be from kind of Sagittarius to Capricorn season. Mm. So that's in my fifth house. That is the perfection year. So whatever happens around that Christmas time will kind of have a lot of importance on the theme of this year, I think. And that Christmas time be happening in France, doesn't it? (laughs) 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 Yeah. 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 And that'll be, uh, yeah, that'll be like square the Mars or trying my son. So very cool. I really liked it. Yeah. I guess also if anybody is like, if you had a birthday coming up, it would be really cool to look into your perfection and also into your solar return. I feel like those are two really cool Mm -hmm. birthday activities. It's, I think it's always fun to look at your progressions. Progressions is like where all of the planets have like moved forward since when you were born. And we've talked about that before, but then with a uh, solar return, it's, you find the exact place the sun was when you were born and the exact place the sun will be this coming year and use that chart as like a predictive means. But this is almost mm-hmm. like a, what's lighting up. I think it's, yeah, I like that. What you said, Martha, like this part of your chart is being lit up and those planets are being lit up. It's just an extra, like they're extra bright this year. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You guys want to look at solar return real quick? Yeah. yeah. I think we got time here. All right. Let's look at solar return. If you remember from the past solar return episode, that kind of rising sign is the theme for the year. So like you, when you're finding your solar return chart, the sun is going to be the thing that's constant from your birthday when you were born to your birthday this coming year, but all the other planets mm-hmm. have moved around and, you know, there's a different rising sign. There's a different, all the other planets. So, um, yeah. that rising sign of that solar return chart kind of has a theme and you got Leo rising and you yeah. are Leo rising. Yeah. Yeah. And so my son, and which also the house that the sun is in, because that could change if you have a different rising sign than what your normal one is, your natal one. Uh, the house that the sun is in is also really important, um, like playing into the theme of, of the year. Yeah. So again, in the ninth house, kind of travel related and it's conjunct my midheaven. But if it's not travel, I mean, that's that Jupiter energy of uh, expansion, of growth, of uh, philosophy, of morals, um, higher learning, higher understanding. It's really cool that, so in the perfection chart, your fifth house is being lit up, which is the house ruled by the sun. And then it is also, um, that house is ruled by Sagittarius and then therefore Jupiter. And now in your solar return chart, the sun is in the ninth house, which is ruled by Jupiter. And it's, so we're talking of, and it's like a Leo rising chart. So you have this prominent Leo and Sagittarius energy in both of them. That's so fun. It's just so fun. Very fiery. Yeah. When I, um, sorry, I'm trying to get my 
my footing looking at this chart because mm-hmm. I am very astro.com in my head. And I'm very not uh, time passages. So I'm like, this oh, sorry. doesn't right. look right for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm too- no, this is a me problem, not a you problem. But when I first looked at your chart, I cannot stop staring at North Node, <laughs> the North Node in your 10th house. And it's like exactly mm-hmm. opposite your natal North Node. If we would yeah. be putting it on the same chart. Big, exactly. like almost exactly yep. by one degree so that's really interesting I feel like you're gonna be having that weird pull of like but I feel like I'm supposed to be like working on stuff at home but it's like actually you're supposed to be putting this out in the public mm. I see that as like the reverse nodal return I see that as like okay your north node or the north node is on my south node so like I'm really working on the release of the south node the letting go mm. of the south ah, node I like that um and then that south node on top of my north node being like, uh, let go of feeling like you have to work towards this north node because it's just going to happen anyway. It's going to happen naturally. Mm. Mm. That's a yeah. lot better way to look at it than like feeling like you're fighting against it. But I feel like it's yeah, like ebb and, it can ebb and flow through both oh, of yeah. those emotions. Like, okay, Absolutely. I know I'm supposed to be releasing that, but release is not easy. Yeah, it doesn't make it easier. Yeah. Um, and then my solar see? return also has that Neptune Jupiter conjunction that hasn't happened since 1856. So <laughs> I'm down. I'm down for this year. Yeah. In oh, the yeah. eighth house. In the eighth mm-hmm. house. So like I I just that's such a such a expansively mystical, I don't know, um, that is just a really magical thing that's happening. And for that to be kind of snapshot into your projected entire yeah. year very cool that happened on your birthday that was super yeah. lucky <laughs> <laughs> oh that and then it, luck. <laughs> it's funny because we've been talking about like mars and saturn a lot mm-hmm. and they're like conjunct in your yeah in your solar return chart as well in the seventh which yeah, is interesting because that. you're gonna be having like your saturn return soon uh soonish in it soon ish in like two years kind of yeah. um maybe more more maybe less but anyways it's gonna be kind of like showing you maybe what's gonna be coming which you've kind of been having that already like here's mm-hmm. the little foreshadowing of your yeah of your saturn return i think there'll be a little bit more of that coming absolutely oh yeah and then uranus in your sixth oh yeah like- uh pluto in my sixth Oh, oh my God. Sorry. The it's once again, that's not the yeah, symbol I look at on the astro.com. Oh, you have your moon in the first house, which I like. Yep. Moon and Leo. Which the in your natal chart, you have like Chiron on your ascendant, which mm-hmm. I I know this is not at all the same, but I'm feeling like this is gonna kind of show up in a similar way. Like, here's my emotions. Yeah, you can absolutely. see it right away. Ooh. Yeah, it's also trying my son. So feeling like I can express myself a little bit more. And Leo is all about expression too. So like making sure that I make space for myself to express and to communicate how I'm feeling. I think that's actually going to be really like such an asset this year, because I know that you've talked about like when we talked about one of our rambles, which I don't think it will have been released yet but like we we're talking about boundaries and we we're talking about mars mm. and having your mars and pisces and having this conjunction you know with neptune and jupiter happening right on top of your natal mars and pisces which makes it sometimes like something of you expressing you know this emotion when it comes to like important topics something that is like you know I guess something that you're, you've always like continued working through. And now with this year being like my moon being the first thing that shows up in this chart and it's, Mm -hmm. you know, making a really happy communication moment with being trying the sun. It's like Mm -hmm. that happening with this Neptune, Jupiter, you know, it's just everything kind of activating everything else and allowing those feelings to have this, I don't know, new Avenue to express through, you know? It's yeah. like fire and water combination where the fire is like, no, I know this is important. I, I need to take action through it. And the water being like bringing compassion and emotion to the table as well. Yeah. So it could be a very passionate year and maybe I'll have to watch myself, make sure that I don't make too much steam. Um, so being really like 
thinking everything through. We want warm water, not steam. You know, you want like heated up. Yeah. And also like that whole like thing with like elementally with fire and water, it, whenever water is warmer, it expands. And so I feel like the, the addition of the heat to the water makes it a little bit less, you know, kind of how you say with fire and air, like fire can like warm the coldness that sometimes has air. I feel like fire can also warm that water that, you know, and helps it move faster and helps it expand yeah. more. So that's just another energy that is kind of coming to play. Yeah. Plus Mercury is at one degree Taurus, which my moon is at one degree Taurus. So again, that aspect of communication oh. when it comes to what I'm feeling can be really important. And that's right at the mid, or like right at the top of the chart. So right in the 10th house. Oh yeah. You had a lot of transits, like exactitude on your birthday. Yep. <laughs> Even like, holy moly, I'm seeing yeah. that now. I'm like looking back and forth between the two charts. All right. Well, I guess yeah. we were talking about that in, in text, but then when you like look at it like this, it's totally different. Yeah. I know. Seeing it yourself. Um, that moon is in such an interesting position because it is trying the sun, but it's also trying Chiron. So Martha, like you were saying that my Chiron being conjunct my ascendant natally, the moon being in my first house of this is, this is what it is. And this is what people will meet first. I think it's just sort of like a, a, a similar, but, uh, extended kind of expression of who I already am. This year feels a yeah. lot like aligning with that. An expansion also- to that. Yeah. Also the way that reading a solar return chart, you start with where the sun is for like that first month of the predictive year. And so coming into Mm. the second month of the predictive year would be the first planet that shows up for you is Mercury and your Mercury just Mm. progressed into Gemini and having this different way of communicating and having this different way of learning. And also, you know, it's a very, it's a very intellectual type of energy, but then you have this Mercury and Taurus. So I feel like Mm. since Taurus is such a naturally like comfortable spot for you, that would be a really Mm. cool way of your, your, like this new Mercury that you're experiencing through progressions, having a more like comfortable feeling to you coming up, because I really feel like Gemini Mercury is going to be a huge, it's just going to be like really important for you in the like progressions. And then that's like the, the next month of this, uh, solar return year, Mercury is going to be really important. And I feel like that's going to be totally a moment of learning that new communication style. Yeah. And that's so interesting because I feel like that's something I've been going through for the last year or so, especially as like my business has gotten bigger that learning, because when I see a car or like when I read tarot or something like I'll, I'll know what the card is trying to say immediately. I'll feel it in my body. Like Taurus, I'll have the sensation of what that card is trying to say. But what I've really had to learn is how to communicate what I, that sensation through words so that the client can understand that feeling just as much, you know, as my body did. And that feels very Mercury and Taurus to me of like communication through the sensations of what's coming through. And it's a little slower. It's a lot more thoughtful rather than my natural mercury and aries which is like let's just talk until something happens kind of thing which i definitely still do so (laughs) it's like extra i don't know i like when i talk about progressions in general and like if i'm giving a reading and explaining progressions i'm like you know for me i was a sagittarius for 30 years of life and then when i turned 30 i was handed capricorn glasses and like i'm wearing capricorn glasses i'm still a sagittarius but i'm wearing capricorn glasses now and i like that like with this type of you know, with progressions, with, uh, you're always going to have Mercury and Aries. That's always a thing, but like your progressed Mercury is now wearing like Gemini glasses, but this year's Mercury for you is Taurus. So it's almost like you got like a Taurus hat over all of it. <laughs> wearing, like, yeah, geez, it's you know? all over the place. Yeah. But at the same time, like that's what is really cool about astrology and predictive astrology. The fact that it's not stagnant, like it's going to, you always have the same you, but it's like, you change the clothing, you change the glasses, you change the, you know, mm-hmm. the, the vision in which you're seeing things. So it's just very cool how yeah. it all works together. Yeah. It's so interesting about predictive astrology. Like which technique do you go to, you know, or do you blend them all together and just see what comes up? I'm curious about like what, what most astrologers do. 
I think both of these, I think both solar return and perfection, like looking at both of the charts for you for this birthday year have proved that they are very similar, you know, like they, they show very similar things. So that's another thing that like, even as we've said, like Placidus versus whole sign, like looking at it differently, you still find so many of the same energies because Mm. it's really just looking at somebody face like head on, as opposed to looking a little bit from their profile. It's like all the things are still there, but we just have a slightly different vantage point of it. yeah. Yeah. And so I think that the difference between a solar return chart and a perfection chart, you know, you're going to find very similar themes, but maybe like, that's why it's cool to look at both of them because you get a different perspective, even just like in everything in life, having more than one perspective is an asset, you know? So I think that that's a cool way of looking at it. How are we feeling, Martha? I, I'm i just like stuck in my head, like thinking about all the next year and what's going to happen and like wondering how <laughs> it's all going to show up. <laughs> and I'm like, now I want to pull up my chart and pull up this and pull up that and pull mm. up this person's chart. And I'm in the, the, in my head. Gemini mode. You know? Yeah, I'm in Gemini mode now. <laughs> I'm like, let <laughs> me dive deep. <laughs> Did anything pop into your head then though? I feel like a lot of has come up in my head and I don't know how to put it all in words yet. I'm, I'm, um, well, actually I was thinking about how I'm going through like a third house perfection year and it's a mm-hmm. sun. And then in my solar return chart, the sun and is in my 10th house. And then I was also thinking about how next year, when I go into a fourth house year, uh, which is ruled by, um, Virgo, uh, then I find Mercury and my Mercury is still in the third house. So it's going to be exactly what you're going through too. I was thinking about all of that. Yeah. That's interesting. It could be cool. Like even doing some sort of live with the people listening or doing, you know, some like thing in the stories where we have you guys send in some of your information. We could give examples of, you know, a perfection chart or a solar return, just like, like dabble in it a little bit. Cause I think this is one of those things too. Like I'll definitely make sure to post um, a picture of what a general um, perfection year chart looks like. So you can find what year, you know, uh, that you're going through. And we can mm-hmm. post a picture of this, like, you know, solar return example, if we want, so that, you know, it can kind of have that visual of what we're talking about, but it would be cool to see some examples of like the people who are listening and everything. So we can try to schedule something like that after this episode comes out to make a little more sense of yeah. it. All. That'd so be much cool. fun. Yeah. That would really honor Mimi's Sagittarius ruled year because expansion (laughs) share the wealth (laughs) yeah Yeah, I definitely feel like this year is going to be a big one about connecting with a lot of different people I've already got a couple of things in the works that I have to tell you guys about about connecting with kind of the other connecting with other people people that I haven't really connected with before so I'm excited very excited to hear well, I'm glad that we got to do a happy birthday Mimi episode, got to have some perfection, a little solar return dabbling and uh, a new like predictive astrology. And it looks like, it seems like you're going to have a freaking like, if we go into that traditional stuff of like, oh, okay, Mars is maybe like not as positive of a year. It's fucking Jupiter. <laughs> you're having a Jupiter year. So heck yes. Mm-hmm. Before we end this episode, we're going to throw in some socials where you can connect with us because I didn't do it at the beginning. So we all have our own Instagrams. Mine is at mimis.me. Martha is at divine alignment with Martha and Sierra is at magical.bookclub. And of course you should follow us on uh, the podcast uh, Instagram, which is at the stars made me podcast. If you ever want to reach out with your chart, you want your chart to be looked at maybe in a future episode, you can email us at the stars made me podcast at gmail.com. We have a Patreon where we post bonus exclusive early content. So please check us out there. Uh, and yeah, just thanks. Thanks for interacting with us. And also, if you sent in a chart for um, parent kid episode that is going to come up soon, I got it. I've responded to everybody who sent it. So thank you for that. And uh, we haven't forgotten about you. We just uh, it's in the works. So thanks for everyone who has contacted us about that. So Sierra, why did we do this today? Because it's Mimi's birthday and because the stars made us do it. (laughs) 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 